Hello, today we'll be talking about one of the most, uh, you know, common pre-malignant condition or pre-malignant lesion or potentially malignant lesion to be precise of oral cavity that is nothing but leukoplakia. Leukoplakia is of very much of clinical importance especially to dentist or oral physician because it has a high malignant transformation about 1 to 20 percent of malignant transformation can be seen in case of leukoplakias. Uh, leukoplakia is again a habit associated disorder most commonly associated with tobacco chewing okay or smoking most commonly associated with smoking now we'll go in detail about this leukoplakia its clinical features and how do we actually have to manage it leukoplakia the word itself is derived from uh, a greek word which is nothing but lu uh, leuko means white and plakia means patch okay it is a white patch WHO has classified this white patch of plaque which cannot be characterized as any other white lesion either clinically or pathologically. That clearly means that leukoplakia is a diagnosis of exclusion. Okay, whenever we see a lesion which has a white patch and nothing comes, you know, uh, we, we are not, we, we know it is not lichen planus, we know it is not just keratosis, we know it is not a, uh, you know, a, a leukoedema or any other white lesion. We have excluded all the different white lesions there. Then, Finally, our conclusion, which does not fall into any clinical or pathological classification, is nothing but is a leukoplakia. Okay, the most common etiology for leukoplakia is tobacco, both chewable and smokable tobacco forms. Leukoplakia is more commonly associated with cigarette smoking than chewing chewable type of uh, tobacco, and even with burns. Okay, ammonia compounds, peridin, phenol resins, tars. Also, we can see this. Uh, Leukoplakia. Alcohol is known to have synergistic effect. Though it was not directly proved that you know, only alcohol will cause uh, uh, leukoplakia, but it is known to have a synergistic effect, especially in case of its malignant transformation. Even deficiency of vitamins, especially deficiency of vitamin A and B, uh, are known to have uh, you know, produced leukoplakia. That is the reason in the treatment of leukoplakia, we give a vitamin A supplement that is retinoic acid as a topical ointment in case or, or systemically in very severe cases in case of leukoplakia. Most commonly we give it as a topical application. And other infections like candidal infections. We have a something called as candidal leukoplakia or hyperplastic candidiasis where clinically it completely resembles a leukoplakia because candidal infections are usually white in color but they have a characteristic scrapable a nature leaving a eroded underlying eroded or erythematous surface but in candida leukoplakia what happens it is a non-scrapable white lesion non-scrapable white patch usually resembles that of a leukoplakia so how do we actually differentiate it when we give anti-candidal uh, uh, anti uh, medication for example clotrimazole etc or nystatin etc usually the lesion comes down if the lesion does not come down again then we can go ahead with our diagnosis as plain leukoplakia we have various viral etiology again especially hsv1 and human papilloma virus 16 and 18 are also uh, associated with our leukoplakia and Epstein-Barr virus is also associated with that of hairy leukoplakia so these are various viruses that are you know, it uh, known to be etiological factors for development of leukoplakia. Dysplastic leukoplakia are present where we can see dysplastic changes within the leukoplakia. Even in syphilis, where we have leukoplakia and syphilitic gosset. Remember, one important thing is leukoplakia was first identified in a patient who was suffering from syphilis. Okay, so in syphilitic glossitis associated with leukoplakia can also be present, and this is again a bacterial infection. Chronic irritation can also lead to leukoplakia. For example, there was a sharp tooth has been chronically irritating it. First, we can see a dramatic keratosis. Later, if the chronic irritation continues, sometimes we can also see a leukoplakia patch there. So, what is the pathophysiology? As I told you, first initially keratosis occur, which develops into acanthosis. There, after that, what happens? We can see elongation of your red apex. Okay, this elongation of red apex further leads into this keratosis leading to the actual, uh, you know, histopathological picture of leukoplakia. Coming to the clinical features, usually in the age group of, uh, you know, third decade to fifth decade, 
सिक्स्थ डिकेड वी कैन सी यूजुअली इन द मिडिल मिडिल एज ग्रुप टू ओल्डर एज ग्रुप एंड मेल्स आर यूजुअली मोर कॉमनली एसोसिएटेड विद इट बिकॉज मोस्ट कॉमनली बिकॉज ऑफ द हैबिट यू नो विच इज अ प्रिडोमिनेंट इटलॉजिकल फीचर कॉमन साइड्स ऑफ लुकोप्लेकिया इंक्लूड ओरल म्यूकोजा स्पेशली और बकल म्यूकोजा एंड टंग ऑल्सो इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमन साइड फॉर लुकोप्लेकिया वी कैन ऑल्सो सी लुकोप्लेकिया स्पेशली इन द रेट्रो कमिशनल एरियाज कॉल्ड एज रेट्रो कमिशनल लुकोप्लेकिया ओके सिम्टम्स ऑफ इट यूजली वी कैन सी अ वाइट पैच पेनलेस वन द सर्फेस इज यूजली रफ ओके विद इन द ओरल कैविटी यूजली दे आर Uh, very less painless there, there doesn't have any pain or uh, if this leukoplakia is interspersed with erythematous area then patient can give a history of burning sensation and variants coming to variants we have homogeneous leukoplakia we see a nice white patch there non homogeneous or speckled leukoplakia will be seen where we see both erythematous areas interspersed within the leukoplakia that is erythro leukoplakia uh, and uh, ulcerative that variant can also be seen called as leukoplakia erosiva varicose is also seen like leukoplakia varicosa where we can see proliferative varicose leukoplakia this is again have high malignant potential where we can see cauliflower like growths varicose growths can be seen over it we can say this leukoplakic patches okay that is nothing but proliferative varicose leukoplakia also called as ackermans keratosis okay uh, ackermans disease or snuff dippers disease and then we have a condition called as pre leukoplakia before all the histopathological features showing it as a true leukoplakia we have a condition called as pre leukoplakia which is actually a low grade one or very mild reaction of the mucosa to the uh, any stimulus or to any insult here the mucosa usually appears gray or grayish in white color and not completely white lesion with nice slightly lobular pattern can be seen however the borders here are indistinct and they nicely blend into adjacent mucosa whereas in true leukoplakia in the leukoplakic condition what happens your borders are well defined you can see clear cut white lesion and it can be nicely delineated from your adjacent mucosa okay that is leukoplakia and we have something like like this like something like homogeneous leukoplakia it is a well defined white patch slightly elevated it can have slight fissures or wrinkling or corrugated surface within it on palpation it is usually leathery dry and we see when we see it it has a wrinkling appearance like we have a cracked mud appearance sun dried cracked mud appearance will be there no like that we can say this homogeneous leukoplakia next one is nodular or speckled leukoplakia it is a granular and non homogeneous mixed with a red lesion red and white lesion mixing can be seen where keratotic white nodules or patches are seen and hairy leukoplakia hairy leukoplakia is usually associated with uh, in uh, with hiv aids uh, most commonly caused by uh, epstein barr virus hairy leukoplakia we can actually see it on the lateral borders of the tongue okay on the lateral borders of the tongue we can nicely see slightly elevated patch with wrinkling surfaces okay and if it occurs on the floor of the mouth we can see a ebbing tide pattern okay this stripes which uh, make on the sand no we have this nice ebbing tide pattern can be seen if it is occurring on the floor of the mouth this is about hairy leukoplakia and don't mistake for hairy leukoplakia don't think it will have all the hairs over there it is just a name because uh because of its you know the corrugated surface it has it has a peculiar corrugated surface which appears like hair coming out it is that is that's the reason called as hairy leukoplakia coming to gross classification based upon the extent of the lesion it is divided into diffuse or localized according to etiology tobacco associated and non tobacco associated we have seen various non tobacco associated etiological features for leukoplakia now based upon uh, you know the classification given by boke and nep uh, and it was divided into four phases phase 1 is pre leukoplakia where we have already seen it as a thin uh, leukoplakia with diffuse uh, surroundings or edges and second one is homogeneous leukoplakia fissured or thick leukoplakia and phase 3 we have nodular or variciform type of leukoplakia and phase 4 is erythroplakia remember erythroplakia is again a red lesion which cannot be classified either clinically or histopathologically like any other red lesion it is in definition similar to your leukoplakia except that it appears in nice bright red and velvety appearance okay and these erythroplakias have very high propensity to convert into malignancies okay malignant transformation rate is very high in case of uh, erythroplakia when compared to that of leukoplakia this is a picture showing nodular leukoplakia 
Now coming to histopathological features, there will be loss of polarity of basal cell, drop shape red defects as we have seen, deep extension of red features and keratinization can be seen. <clears throat> How do you do investigations for it? Exfoliative cytology with the help of brush biopsy, you know, say oral CDX brush biopsy, we can do a trans epithelial uh, uh, biopsy there, you know, scraping of the cells and check it on the, uh, uh, you, can, you can actually check uh, under the microscope and you can see acantholytic cells, you can see acanthosis actually, acanthosis and deep uh, of the cells can be observed in case of this exfoliative cytology. Then uh, biopsy. Uh, if the lesion is small, we can do incisional uh, excisional biopsy. If it is a large lesion, again, we do an incisional biopsy and check for histopathology, where we can see various histopathological features again, like keratinization, drop, uh, drop shape, red defects, loss of polarity of basal cells, etc. Immunohistochemistry is in higher end, which will actually give us you know, the variant of uh, 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 leukoplakia also. Now, coming to management, first and foremost, Ask the patient to quit the habit. Counsel the patient about the various ill, Ill effects of tobacco and tobacco related products and also alcohol. And if you are suspecting a candida leukoplakia, then give antifungal agents. This might reduce the lesion. If the lesion size is reduced, then you can uh, go ahead in treating in, in terms of candidiasis. If it is not, uh, you know, red, then we can see no improvement within the lesion, then we treat it as leukoplakia. Antioxidants will help in, uh, you know, uh, in uh, preventing its malignant transformation. Bleomycin has been tried in case of leukoplakias and uh, it is still in research, okay. The topical bleomycin agent is still under research. Now coming to surgical therapies, surgical surgery is the best uh, treatment modality when we are treating leukoplakia. Scalpel surgery, we do a nice wedge incision, remove of the tissue that is uh, uh, affected with leukoplakia if the lesion is small. If the lesion is larger in size, then you can go with laser ablation or you can do a cryo surgery or electrocautery. Thus, we can actually remove of that leukoplakia tissue. Uh, this is an image which is showing electrocautery and the next picture we have actually a cryo gun with spraying a liquid nitrogen okay dry ice liquid nitrogen can be uh, used in case of this cryo surgery so this is about leukoplakia uh, the various etiological factors of leukoplakia various clinical symptoms of it or clinical features how do you examine and how do you treat it uh, so this is about leukoplakia and whenever you are seeing a case of leukoplakia always keep in mind that it is a potentially malignant disorder and hence utmost care has to be taken for it thank you